Welcome back to the Ultra Radical Toy Works channel. Let's go back to 2011. October Toys wanted to relive the good old days with some Keshi akin to the likes of Muscle or Monster in My Pocket. Bizarre monster buddies. Like a golem made out of a mass of skulls or a sentient outhouse. So naturally, what do you do? You kickstart that shit. Because for a brief moment this was a sane world, it was funded. And before us we have OMFG, Outlandish Minifigure Guys, Series 1. Unfortunately October Toys is no more, but the line had a good run, a total of four series, all of which were kickstarted, showing there was plenty of interest in the line. And getting everyone to essentially pre-order is just a good business practice. When all of this OMFG stuff was going down, I was absent from collecting. If I had known about it, I probably would have backed the shit out of it. That's the dream, right? Rallying a whole bunch of homies to make some dope-ass, hyper-romanticized vision from your childhood come to life? And the only thing you're risking is your reputation and someone else's money. Fuck yeah, I'd do that in a heartbeat. Also, if I ever kickstart anything, I realize that last part probably doesn't instill too much faith in my general audience. And by no means am I trying to undermine the whole shebang. It's a good idea plus Kickstarter equals amazing result. That's the world I want to live in. So what kind of Keshi do we have here? The flesh tone kind with pretty excellent sculpts. First up, Stroll. Well hello there mascot for Spanky Stokes blog. I didn't see you there you fuzzy little cyclops yeti you. Every part of me wants to hit that eyeball with a sharpie so that it's pupilless eye stops boring a hole through my soul, but I know what sharpie does to Keshi. Side note, parents, stop making your kid write his name on the foot of his toys. It fucks it up when some repressed ass beard boy 20 years later is trying to collect those toys so that for a brief moment he can feel like the world is whole again when he has a shelf full of esoteric shit to show off to no one. I digress. Stroll is tight, his sculpt is great, and who doesn't like a fuzzy looking monster? In the description I've linked to the empire he represents. Next, King Castor. Who is truly king of the castle? Bolder questions have never been asked. Maybe he's the soul of a king, trapped in his keep, doomed to lord over his land as a tyrannical walking stone bastion that stands tall to remind us all of man's hubris. Or he's just a walking castle monster, the end. The sculpt on our boy here is great. The character is fun and imaginative. Imaginative is a weird word. I don't like it. And if you dig it and you want to see more from the mind behind this castle daddy, link in the description. It seems like the creator of this one does some pretty rad Glio stuff, so check it out. Next, Phantom Outhouse. Not a lot to unpack here. Haunted shit has come back to wreak its revenge. <laughs> see what I did there? Reek. It's revenge on campers for having to do what you must do while camping, shit in a hole in the ground. The concept is a little bit revolting, but that's okay, it's kind of gross out humor, so that kind of stuff was ever prevalent throughout the 80s and 90s. As with all these sculpts, it's looking good. The creator of this one has failed to maintain any social media presence, so unfortunately I can't uh, follow this one up with links. If I'm wrong and you DM these dudes like all day every day on Instagram, let me know but all I found was a dusty old deviant art with a link to an even dustier MySpace. Next, Crawdad Kid. A mer person of sorts. A little chowder head. <laughs> I don't know guys, I just say shit sometimes and I can't take it back. Daniel Yu is a boss. I've been following him for years now and he's incredibly talented and this crustacean headed creature is by far the most impressive as far as sculpt and form goes. His footprint is most similar to a classic muscle figure, and it blends in well with any humanoid Keshi you have lying around. Is he my favorite? Maybe. This next one we're going to talk about is pretty tight too. And if you're unfamiliar with Daniel Yu, go check out the link I've left for you downstairs in the description. I love his work, and you should too. The final one of the bunch, Multi Skull. This one does it for me because it ties into that childlike imagination, that sense of wonder. It is the essence of what a nostalgia-driven project should be. It's like ripping a page out of a kid's notebook, the kind of page that's one part crayon, one part felt tip pen that's all fucked up because you dragged it through waxy crayon lines, and that's clearly not the best way to preserve a felt tip pen, and one final part blue ballpoint pen because one time you stayed at a Best Western. What I'm trying to say is that a pile of skulls that is humanoid and goes by the name Multiskull is the kind of thing I would think is the fucking coolest thing I could have ever imagined when I was six. Thus, I love it. I apologize if the concept or source material or idea is meant to be more serious, but this is hilarious and nostalgic in all the right ways. 
As for the sculpt, it's fine. It kind of looks like something I would have tried to make out of leftover Warhammer bits and glue in my bored teenage years, so we're murdering two birds with one nostalgic Keshi stone right now. I like him a lot. As for the creator of this little gem, if you want to follow up, it looks like ya boy is still active on Facebook, but there's a trail of abandoned blog spots and Twitters left behind. I can't blame him, Twitter is the worst, second only to Facebook. So that was my take on the OMFG Series 1. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at these little guys with me. Honestly, I think they're great and the whole Keshi Kickstarter concept is pretty awesome. I like that people are willing to throw down dough and bring someone's vision to life. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know downstairs in the comments which of these dudes you dig the most and why. I would love to hear from you, and not in the normal YouTube exploitative kind of way where people are just trying to promote activity because they think the YouTube algorithm is going to favor them. I do respond to most comments, and I would love to shoot the shit with you about these Keshi dudes. Or maybe just, you know, fill the comment with uh, 100 pineapple emojis because fuck it, who cares about a dialogue? No, no, I'm kidding. I do want to know uh, which guy you think is the best. Have a nice day. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, bye bye